Hi, this is Kev. Let's dive into an underwater scene. <laughs> make a landscape using Ant Landscape. It's in the Preferences add-ons. Enable it. It'll make all your dreams come true. Choose large terrain and give it a mesh size of 50 on the X and Y. This makes a somewhat believable seabed-y thingy. Now, position that in your camera and check a few things in Eevee, because that's what we're using for this, because it's quick and dirty, it renders fast, and is decent for this video. I generally like cycles and compositing layers better, but that's another video for later. Turn on Ambient Occlusion, Bloom, Motion Blur, High Bit Depth, and Soft Shadows. Turn Tile Size and Volumetrics to 2 pixels to make the volume look better, and turn on Volumetric Shadows. Turn down Viewport Sampling to 0. You'll feel better later when you don't get a seizure. Now position your camera. You can assign Lock Camera to View to a quick favorite here. You'll love this. Do this. Right click on it and you'll thank me later. Further position your camera to make it look better. Scale the seabed down a bit to make it look more sandy, or higher for rockiness. Let's add the ocean! Make a plane, then go to Modifiers and add Ocean. Name the plane Ocean so we don't get confused. If you're sharing this file, your teammates will thank you. If you're doing this on your own in your mom's basement to make your next expert YouTube tutorial, cool too. Increase the size of the ocean and give it a higher resolution than 7. 28 seems to work here. Move the ocean above the seabed. Give it a size of 1 because the, well, I don't know, the other size looks stupid. Let's animate the ocean. Choose how long you want this animation to be. I chose 192 frames. Add 192 to the timeline and the bake ocean end slot. You never want to make your computer do more work than it has to. Now, insert a keyframe at frame 1 on the time slot, then move your time slider to 192. Type in like 10 in the time slot and keyframe 10 at 192. The time slot is where you animate the ocean. Higher or lower numbers just dictate the speed it rolls at. There, now you're the king of the world. You can go win seven Oscars or hit an iceberg and get that song stuck in your head again for a year. Now, go to camera view and see how it looks. Let's make it look better by changing the world color to blue, like most under ocean photography. Give the ocean a principled shader and turn transmission all the way up. Add in a sunlight and spin it until it looks shiny. Give the floor a shader and turn up the roughness to make it less shiny. Look at underwater photography, it's usually never shiny. Don't worry about the sun right now, it's just me being neurotic. Now we make it look more like underwater. Make a cube. Delete the principled shader and replace it with a principled volume shader. Plug the volume into volume and you get grayness. This is okay. Scale the cube up on the X and Y to like 20 and maybe 4 on the Z. Make the color blue something. I, I never took one day of art history. Now let's learn a really cool trick for controlling the fall off of the murkiness. Hit Control T if you have Node Wrangler installed. If you don't, go install it under Add-ons, then come back here and hit Control T. Here's the magic part. Ready? Delete the image node and add in a separate XYZ node and a combined XYZ node. Plug in the Y to Y and add in a math node in between. You can leave it at Add. Also, make sure the texture coordinate into the mapping node is set to Object. Play with the add value and watch the murkiness roll in and out. It's fun. You'll be here for at least three minutes before you get bored. For more fun, go to your camera view and see what's happening. Remember art history? Yeah, neither do I, so let's add in a foreground now. I've seen barnacle rocks and stuff underwater, so let's make those and stick those in the foreground. Here's another neat trick. Add mesh, landscape, and choose mounds. Now give that a subdivision surface modifier with a value of like two is fine, and a displace modifier. Hit new. Choose global and give it a cloud texture with a size of 0.65 and a depth of 6. Play around with these to your liking. You're, you're probably better at art stuff than me anyway. Now, move it into position. Find something cool, then duplicate it a few times. The great thing here is that because we chose global, this will change wherever you move it, giving you amazing variation for free. And free is good because this video is free and so is Blender. Now, give this a shader. The color is not too important here as it will largely be washed out, but the bump is. So give it a bump with a noise texture and up the detail. The detail makes it look rocky. The scale helps a bit too, but the detail is where the magic is at. Scatter a few more of these around the scene. For this video, I'm not going to add in flora as I'm going for a rocky look and want this to be quicker. I'll do a video at a later date with caustics and plants because I'm cool like that. But for now, let's just go with this. Now bubbles. Let's add a plane. Give it a particle emitter. Turn frame start to something sub-zero so that the particles are already in the scene when the frame starts. Turn off gravity so the bubbles don't fall, because that just looks stupid. And play it back to see what's happening. Hide the ocean if your computer is crawling like those dudes in Breaking Bad. 
Now, if your bubbles are in a straight line, add in a turbulence force field and play with the strength. This will make them look a bit more natural. Now move this off to one side and duplicate it around the scene once or twice. Now we'll make it bubbly. Add in a UV sphere, go to your particle settings, and under render choose object, then sphere. Add the scale to your liking and add randomness too. Give the sphere a shader. Turn the transmission way up. Play with the roughness and under your shader properties turn on screen space reflection. This is the trick that makes the bubbles refract in the environment. Play with the refraction settings or look up IOR, that's index of refraction on the internet and get exactly what you want. Now let's animate the camera moving forward a bit and give it some random up and down motion to simulate being underwater. If you have linear enabled as default, once you animate this, go into graph editor, interpolation mode, and change it to Bezier so that your motion is more natural looking. Now turn on depth of field for your camera to blur it slightly. A low value works pretty well. Render it out and there you go, a good start to an underwater environment. I added fish to this one, and yes, it's a Boyd system with animation. I'm not going there though, I'm sure you can find a fish tutorial somewhere online. That's about it. Like I've said in other videos, cycles and render layers in comp is way better for this. But this is quick and dirty pre -vis looking animation and can get you started thinking about creating your own aqua person movie. Go forth and create. See you in the next one if you still like me. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Bye for now, and thanks for your time.